One of my favorite tools to use for calligraphy is simply a pencil. There are lots of reasons why I like using a pencil, but the main reason is because it has an eraser. So if you make a mistake, you can just erase it and try again. That's what makes it great for everyday practice when you're working on your letter forms or if you are designing a draft or a layout. There's not as much pressure to get it right on the first try as if you were using ink. You can just erase and try again. I love using a pencil when I'm trying out different designs of a quote to plan it out before I go on to using ink. If I'm doing flourishes, then I can try different shapes, erase them, try something else, see what looks the best. So you probably wouldn't be using a pencil for a, a final piece for something like addressing an envelope or making a card, but you can use pencil for daily practice and planning things out. Another benefit is that you can use any type of paper. You can even use something like a post-it note or a notepad, which makes it great for just daily practice and anytime you have a few minutes here and there. For brush pens and pointed pen, you do have to use special paper. For example, with brush pens, you have to make sure your paper is nice and smooth, otherwise your brush pens will start to fray. The paper I'm using here is called layout paper, and it actually has a little bit of roughness to it. It's also semi-transparent, so I have a guide sheet underneath that I can use for practicing. So let's talk about what pencil calligraphy looks like and then what kind of pencil to use. You can create calligraphy that looks like this, which is based on the copper plate style. Traditionally, it's done with a pointed pen, which is a flexible tool or a brush pen, but you can use a pencil and practice this style simply by adding pressure. We'll talk more about pressure in a little bit, but just to show you what it looks like in practice, I'm just gonna write the word hi. And you can see I'm getting a difference between thick and thin lines and also darker and lighter lines. The way I'm doing that is by adding pressure. So that's how you would get a copper plate style look. You could also do faux calligraphy with a pencil. So for faux calligraphy, you actually just write everything like normal and then you go back in and you add in these areas with shade. So it's kind of like you're manually shading it. Go back in and color this in. In calligraphy, anywhere where you are moving in the downward direction, that's where you have a thicker stroke. So you can create more contrast with faux calligraphy like this. And then you can also do hand lettering. So hand lettering is more like drawing. With calligraphy, it's a writing motion where you're writing each of these strokes. And then faux calligraphy is somewhere in between. So hand lettering would be like if you're writing the letter H, you could sketch it out first, maybe like this. I'm not a hand lettering expert, so don't judge me on this, but you can erase parts. You could even like with 3D lettering if you're sketching it out. So it's more of like a drawing and sketching motion, whereas this calligraphy was very stroke by stroke. And then the faux calligraphy was somewhere in between where you are writing it and going back in and drawing it. You can also do broad edge style calligraphy with a pencil. This is what a broad edge pen looks like. And with a broad edge pen, you can achieve thick lines and thin lines by changing the angle. So you can draw a thick stroke this way, thin stroke this way, and then you can also have curves that have transitions. So with a pencil, the way you would do that is you can actually tie two pencils together with a rubber band and then mimic that look. So this would be like the thick stroke, thin stroke, and curved stroke. So if you had the letter H, now I'm not a broad edge expert, but it would look something like this. And then you could go back and color it in to get it to look like that. So those are different ways that you can use pencil for calligraphy. And I'm gonna talk more about this one right here, which is similar to a copper plate style where we're adding pressure. So the way that you do this, again, is by pressing harder on some strokes and the strokes that you press harder are in the downward direction. So anytime you're coming towards yourself, you're pressing down hard. Anytime you're going in the upward direction, you press down light. 
Now I am naturally light handed, so I feel like I have to press down very, very hard to make these thicker, darker strokes. And then for me, the upstrokes are more natural, but if you naturally press really hard, then those might come easier to you and you might have to really focus on pressing lightly for the upstrokes. So you might be wondering if there is a special type of pencil that you have to use for calligraphy. And the answer is actually no. I'll talk about some benefits of using a different um, kind of pencil, but you can use a mechanical pencil or just a regular pencil. Any pencil that you have lying around works great. Now you might notice that this pencil has some numbers and letters on it. This one says HB2. So there's actually a scale of graphite. Graphite is what you might be calling lead that ranges from H to B. So H means hard. And the harder the graphite is, the lighter it writes. And then there's also B, which stands for, it stands for black, but it means that the lead is softer. So this pencil I'm just using to show you, but you would actually have a pencil that, so these, these have numbers associated with them. So like a, a 2B to a 9B, and then same with the hard, it ranges. So like a 2B would be more black than any of the H pencils, a 9B would be the most black, and then a 9H would be the hardest one, so it would be the lightest. Okay, if you have drawing pencils or if you are someone that um, uses pencils for drawing, then you probably have these and you probably know what I'm talking about. If you don't, then you probably just have a normal pencil that says HB, which is also called, in the US, it's called a number two pencil. Um, I haven't done any research to figure out why it's number two, but that's right in the middle, HB. Not too hard, not too soft, and so you can get both dark lines and light lines. Now if you have a choice, then I would recommend leaning more towards the B side, the black side, because the lead is softer, or the graphite is softer, and it's easier to get the darker, thicker lines. Now if you're using a mechanical pencil, I recommend finding a lead that is a little thicker. So this is 0.7 millimeter lead. And here you can press down and get some dark lines. You can press lightly and get some thinner lines. I don't recommend using a very sharp lead because then it would be really hard to get any kind of thickness in the line. Also, if you are using a pencil, it's better if it's a little bit dull. It's not super sharp because if it's super sharp then it's again it's harder to get the thicker lines. So let's write a couple of letters with the pencil just so you can see what it looks like. I'm just gonna make some letters of the alphabet. And as I'm writing if you are new to calligraphy just pay attention to how my pencil is moving. We talked about the pressure where we have light upstrokes and dark or thicker downstrokes. Again, that's achieved by pressing harder or lighter. So if, as you're practicing this, don't be afraid to go very slowly. You don't need to rush. And really think about pressing down hard and then lighter. So these letters are not exactly written like handwriting or cursive. In cursive, you keep your pen on the page and you just kind of write it all in one motion. Here, we're actually lifting the pencil very frequently, multiple times per letter usually. Here's a good example of when the eraser comes in handy. I was trying to make an F and it didn't end up looking very good. So let's try that again. So for example, in the letter G, I'm going to make, that's the first stroke, it's called an entrance stroke. The second stroke is called an oval. The third stroke is called a descending stem loop. And then the last stroke is an exit stroke. So that one letter had four strokes in it. And those strokes are called the basic strokes or sometimes known as the fundamental strokes. So here are all of the fundamental strokes of calligraphy. We actually have a whole video about these that you should go watch if you're interested in it. We also talk about the history of the basic strokes in that video. You can print out this worksheet at the link in the description. It's a free worksheet that has the basic strokes for you to practice. So go ahead and practice some downstrokes by pressing hard, upstrokes by pressing light, and all of these other shapes here on this page. And that will get you used to using pressure for calligraphy 
and learning these basic strokes so that you can put them together and form letters. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you are inspired to get out your pencil and try practicing calligraphy today.